one last question before we leave it to the floor, Sadhguru. We are all proud of our own culture, tradition, or history, or philosophy. After all, each country is proud of its own past, and we probably have greater um, claim to uh, some exceptional accomplishments as a society and civilization. But there are two problems that are recurring in the modern context. The first is, even in the minds of people of our background sitting here, otherwise enlightened and liberal, there is this moral neutrality to inequality by birth. While we treat people who don't have an opportunity because of circumstances, because of poverty, with a lot of kindness, with a lot of compassion, we do not realize that those children are entitled to the same opportunity that my child is entitled to. It's, it's simply alien, it appears to me, to our culture, unless a very strong message goes consistently, unless everybody is allowed to rise, everybody will fall eventually. The second deficit appears to be, more or less as a corollary of this, a trust deficit, an incapacity to recognize that there is a common fate binding all of us. Politicians blaming bureaucrats, bureaucrats blaming judges, judges and politicians and bureaucrats together blaming media, all of them blaming somebody else. This is a blame throwing and treating the other fellow as a nuisance and not being able to look at the bigger whole and our own role in making the bigger things happen seems to be a very special Indian problem. What do you advocate, Sadhguru, to address these two challenges? See, we need to understand India. The problem is, we are trying to look at India through a Western education window. Right now, all the educated Indians, somewhere there is one window of Western education, rest of it is total chaos and we like chaos. We are a colorful mess. As long as you're not trying to work with somebody, their Indians are fine. Because everybody is a genius by himself. But you can't organize a genius and get results. By themselves they are good. You try to put them together, there's a big problem. So what India is, is why it is like this is, I already mentioned this in passing. One thing is, India does not have beliefs and India has never had moral code. See, every other nation has strict moral code, people feel guilty about certain things. An Indian can just do just about anything very happily. Do you understand? <laughs> I have had the misfortune of sometimes closely interacting with some very famously corrupt people right now in the country. When I really looked at them closely, what I saw was they did not even think they're doing something wrong. So your ideas of morality, ethics, uh, they're shocked that you're saying you're complaining. After all, I become a minister, shouldn't I make some money? What are you talking? I'm saying they're not even I mean, they're surprised that you people are complaining because India is not… has never had a moral code, but still people remained in a certain way because there was a spiritual ethos. People told you, everything is your karma, whatever you do, there will be a consequence and people stirred up certain other dimensions within you. Every generation had people who would stir up this possibility of consciousness within you. We operated out of continuous stirring up of con uh, consciousness, never morality. Now we have come to a place where in the last few hundred years or few generations, nobody has come, I won't say nobody, not enough people have come to stir up consciousness. And consciousness has gone low, no morality, we are between the two cultures, we are falling in the gap. We have lost our way of keeping ourselves in check, but we still cannot take on Western way of strict morality. And we are falling in the gap in between, that's where we are. See, right now, 
It's seriously happening like yes, you said yesterday's yesterday election results and everywhere else, whether it's Bengal or UP or Tamil Nadu or wherever else. Gradually in India, there is no party which you can call as national party, all regional parties. As regional parties becoming more and more powerful and they sweep the state and natural… national parties are completely routed. I am not trying to pitch for them because there is nothing to defend them, <laughs> okay? But whichever way, whatever they may be, for the long-term interest of the nation, it's very important one, two, two or three national parties must become strong. Otherwise, after twenty-five to fifty years, we will wonder, why are we one nation? Suddenly one chief minister will become prime minister. A chief minister who is chief minister for ten years and frustrated with his chief ministership, wants to become a prime minister. When he sees there is no other way to become a prime minister there, he will become a prime minister here. Yes. And already some serious att attempts in this direction have been made in the past in certain states. If we value India as a nation, it's very important that we must strengthen the national parties. How to join these parties, both are a mess. That is a real problem, what to do? But what we need to understand is, there is people, there are parties and there is administration. In Indian mind, these three things are distinctly separate. This distinction should go. There is no people, party and administration. There is people, people and people. This is what a democracy means. People who are sitting here in this chair, tomorrow could be walking the street campaigning for a party, day after tomorrow they could be in that chair. This is what democracy means, that you are here today, tomorrow you could be there. So this distinction has to go. These are all easier said than done to remove these distinctions, to make people understand, because how many people can you even talk to in this country? Because you know only two languages, yes? Maybe I know three languages, but how many people will you speak? There are sixteen, twenty-four languages in the country, who are you going to speak, who are you going to leave out? So there are these issues, there are these issues, but it is very, very important. However corrupt, however nonsensical, however rubbish it is, it is important to strengthen two or three national parties, otherwise there will be no India after fifty years, there will be many countries.